We're progressing even further in part three of this crazy tiny BMX e-bike build. We're going to be doing a lot of work on the battery and getting it to a test rideable state, so let's go. On the last episode, we did do a lot of work on the battery bag to get these batteries to fit inside and I finally got it to a spot where it looks like it's going to work. The first step is wrangling all of these individual packs and turning it into one giant solid pack. Frankly, I'm tired of moving around these individual little blue potato batteries and sticking them all together is going to make my job of making the wiring of these much more efficient and dealing with all of these crazy connectors. You're probably asking yourself, what's up with this crazy battery setup? And I had that same reaction when I opened the package because I bought this battery online and I was thinking that it was just a regular type of battery where it's just one battery with individual cells inside of it. But that absolutely was not the case. Look at all of these connectors and all these wires just shoved into other connectors that are just kind of screwed together and coming out. This is terrible. At best, this is a safety hazard just for handling the pack and at worst this is a fire hazard and should be avoided completely. The way this pack was advertised they didn't say anything or show anything that would allude to that there were individual packs in this battery pack. Of course I will take the responsibility for not inquiring or asking questions beforehand but I didn't have any reason to believe that this was going to be a separated segregated pack. I'm not saying that this seller hid the fact that these were individual battery packs but they also didn't go out of their way to make that very clear and known. Supposedly they are Samsung cells so they are supposed to be good but that's only going off the merit of what the label is saying as well as the seller and who knows if that's actually true or not I'm not sure. What I do know is that this pack was very expensive. It was like 570 bucks. According to the label and how it's all wired together, it will be 72 volts and at 60 amp output. I did debate just returning the whole thing and getting my money back and getting a more normal kind of pack setup, but I already had it and I figured I could make it work, so here we are. These individual pack form factors actually come from those motorized hoverboard scooter things that if you've ever seen a fail video, you've seen a hundred people just eat it hard falling off of them. They are 36 volt each and 4.4 amp hours and they have their own internal BMS per individual pack. When you wire two of them together in series that will get you 72 volts and then when you take that series pair and you parallel that three times you get 13.2 amp hours. I've never made my own battery pack for any of my e-bikes so this is the closest thing that I've got to like making my own pack. So doing things like running them in series where you're connecting the red to the black leads just felt very uncomfortable but nothing happened or exploded and I was fine. You can see I'm cleaning up and just getting rid of all of those bundles of connectors. I didn't change how the wiring was set up. I just got rid of all the connectors and made my own much more efficient connections. I was going to be performing this regardless if they actually fit inside of the bag or not because I just felt much more comfortable with everything soldered together and having everything be so much cleaner. As you guys saw at the end of the last episode, another issue I was having with this battery mounting tray was that it was now wobbling back and forth pretty badly. I was weary on just how the threads in the top part of the top tube were going to hold up and yeah they didn't really hold up. So now I'm just making holes going all the way through the tube and putting a long bolt and nuts and washers on the other side. Of course I didn't have these bolts on hand so I had to wait another week or so to have these arrive in the mail. I didn't trust buying the exact right length of bolts so I just got some longer ones and I knew that I was going to have to pretty much custom modify these ones to be the exact length because I am running out of room in the triangle area there. Getting that last bolt to fit with the controller in there is going to be a tight squeeze but I think I have enough room to do it. 
You can see I'm even removing the washer here because I need every spare millimeter that I can. I do not want this bolt to be crushing into the controller, although it might help it, you know, stay there better, but I don't want to do that. So I'm just marking these where I can cut them and then we will just chop them off. I had no idea I was going to be spending this much time on the battery mounting system and of course hindsight 2020 I probably would have just made my own mount out of metal. I would have just done away with the bag entirely and made my own metal mount which may have looked cooler but I do think the bag is interesting because it doesn't look like a battery mount it just looks like a storage pouch or something like that. I think it's easy to be critical of myself and an armchair engineer from the future of oh I should have done it this way but it's like I didn't know that during the time and these builds are kind of a creative endeavor where you're just kind of going one step at a time and seeing what works and what doesn't work and that's part of the fun. And just look at all that room I have above the controller. I should have put these zip ties through before screwing everything down but it was easy enough to push them through. Now with the battery wiring all cleaned up I did want to see how it fit in this bag now and I'm hoping that it zips up completely and it does so this was a huge success and milestone at least to this point. And I did order a new rear brake that was actually going to work but I have to wait for that to show up and here I am fitting the new chain because the old one was no longer long enough. Again I'm using my favorite park chain separation tool and that makes working on these chains so much easier. At this point I did want it to get to a test rideable state so I'm just throwing some pedals on here so that when I do ride it I have some place to put my feet. And now that I've measured how long I need these power leads to go to the controller, which is not very far, I can throw on the much larger XT90 connectors and then I'm going to be making my own charging leads and having those terminate to a XT60 connector. Of course you don't need charge leads because you can just keep unplugging and replugging the battery but you have to do that every time you want to charge and having these smaller charging leads is just a lot easier. These are the XT90S connectors which have the spark arresters inside of them. If you're familiar with the 72 volt systems, every time you plug in the main power connectors there's a significant pop and spark that comes out and it's very jarring. Like you feel like your life is flashing before your eyes every time you connect your battery. And these connectors just help that experience be a little less dramatic and a little less exciting. Your charge wires can be a lot smaller than the discharge wires because they are not putting through the amps. I mean at most you're probably going to be charging at 5 amps maybe. Don't really need a giant connector or leads for that. I would just build my own packs but from my research you don't really save that much money by building your own. You would save money in the long run if you're making a ton of different packs like all the time. And you also have to invest in the tools and materials like a spot welder. But then you will have more freedom with what cells you can get and also what configuration you want to put them in. I probably will make my own packs at some point just for the experience but as of now I've been doing just fine with either getting packs custom made for me or just kind of modifying my own like this. If you would like to see me make a tutorial on how to make your own pack then I definitely can do that although there are already millions of tutorials out there on the net on how to do it and it's not all that complicated. I always overdo it with the electrical tape. It is a bit more protection going on from rubbing and stuff like that, but it's mostly just to make the cables black. I should do it the correct way and get some nice sleeving to do that, but electrical tape is cheap and it's much easier. Just wrap it around and you're done. The other thing is this pack did not come with a charger so I had to buy one of those separately and so it just had these weird clip-ons for charging which I who would use those but I guess somebody so I'm just putting a XT60 connector on this to mate with the battery so that I can charge it. I have heard you're not supposed to run packs like this together with their own separate BMS's but I've seen other people do it and I also haven't had any problems with it but you know take that with a grain of sand and do your own research on what you should and shouldn't do. With the pack solidly mounted to the top tube and all the wiring now kind of connected up, I can finally say we're at a point where 
the bike itself is going to be functional, but I hadn't tested all the electronics yet, so that's what I'm going to do right here. I was very excited to get it to this point because I wanted to just ride it and see what it was like, and unfortunately I don't have any footage of that, but I can tell you that this thing is absolutely absurd. I'll definitely go into more of the experience of riding it when this build is finally complete, but I can just tell you right now that this thing is crazy fast. It just makes you laugh because you look at it and then you ride it and you're like, there's no way this thing should go this fast. It is just stupid. It is very, very scary, but it is also a lot of fun to ride. Even with zero cosmetics so far, it doesn't look that bad either. It definitely has a Halloween vibe going on right now, which I do like, although we're gonna change that up a lot. And I'm gonna stop this now because we did get a lot of progress and got it to a running state. Thank you guys so much for watching, I really appreciate it. But this build is far from over. <laughs> We're jumping into all of the cosmetic mods that I have planned for this build and it's a lot so we still have a ton more to go. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you in the next one.